best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. And uh, what is a comic book? I did what is a comic store. So what is a comic book? Well, the answer to what is a comic book, it's whatever you need it to be at the time you're making the argument you're making. So, for example, if you're making an argument that the uh, comic industry is super healthy and doing better than ever and everything is awesome, then what is a comic book? Everything. You know what's a comic book? Movies are comic books. Street signs are comic books. License plates are comic books. Everything is a comic book. Everything is doing great. That's that's what a comic book is. But, you know, what is a comic book? The thing is, in many ways, it is up to you to some extent. The the kind of by the book definition, I'm doing air quotes here that you can't see, is that a comic book contains sequential art and storytelling. And if it's got that, then it's technically a comic book. But if I use that definition, then some advertisements are comic books. I don't think that's really right. Um, you know, comic strips in the new, if there are still Sunday comics in the newspaper, like once every two years, I see a newspaper and it's open. I'm like, holy shit, there's a comic section here. And Marmaduke is still in there. My God, that dog is got to be that that dog is either so dead or genetically modified or like, there's no way that dog is surviving all this. Uh, anyway, that's not what I'm actually thinking. But anyway, but I don't consider those comic books. I would you consider even like Spider-Man, the Sunday comic strip or the, the newspaper comic strip? is not a comic book. Now, if you took all those comic strips and you collected it, you know, in a 22 page book with staples in it, then maybe it starts to feel like a comic book to me. But I, again, that, that doesn't make any sense if you really think about it. So I it, it, it think comic books has a particular kind of definition that we all more or less kind of think of when somebody says a comic book and, you know, you don't need to really worry about it. Put it this way, uh, no matter who you're arguing with on the internet, if you find your argument to what is the exact nature of a comic book, and you're arguing if like a comic strip that's been collected in a graphic novel is still a graphic novel, what is a graphic novel? All I know is you are not getting laid. That's uh, that's the conclusion to that argument. Uh, but anyway, oh, now, now I've opened up the incel argument. Jesus Christ, what am I doing? Um, but regardless, what is a comic book? Well, I did a video recently where I talked about uh, my kids are finding that uh, Dav Pilkey is uh and, and dogman and and um captain underpants has more maturity in terms of storytelling than some of the anthologies and some of the stuff coming in my irritation just to be 100 percent clear with it is that you live in a superhero shared universe and you are celebrating one type of superhero in this case women uh but you can use this for the pride issue or the various uh voices issues and uh, the one that still irks me to this day i don't know why uh, maybe it's because, you know, my sister-in-law is Spanish and I, I happen to like Mexican cuisine and I do have been down to both Mexico and South America many, many, many times. For whatever reason, the Marvel Voices uh, uh, Latino uh, version was numbingly terrible for me because the, the stories were non-existent, just featured heroes at times clowning on people and doing a lot of eating and baking. And it was it, it was written it it read like somebody who had zero understanding of uh, Latin culture or any of that kind of stuff. Make it, I mean, like there's a lot of really cool Latin superheroes, a lot of them, and yet uh, they boiled them all down to nothing. I mean, they had this comic. It was, it was I don't know. I it, I remember feeling offended by this comic book by how dumb it was. Uh, but anyway, I, I made the video talking about how my kids found it, and and the point for me was that the storytelling uh, was, you know, was more complex, that there's a storyteller in there um, in the form of Dab Pilkey that was able to create a better story structure and a better, all, all that kind of stuff, that even though it was aimed for kids, clearly aimed for kids, I mean, Dogman, Captain Underpants are clearly aimed for kids, but uh, it was it, the structure and just the, the, the narration, how the story flowed, and all the rest of that kind of stuff was stronger, better, that allow what we see in, in quote unquote grown up comics or more adult comics. And it, it was kind of a depressing kind of thought for me. I made a video about it. I talked about it. I guess somewhere, I'll be honest, I don't remember saying this in the video, but I know I did. I'm not saying I did. I, I know I did. It just wasn't, it wasn't a clear, clear point. I listened to some videos of people kind of mocking this Women of Marvel issue. And I said, some of these people should read Dogman and just compare. 
And I think I must have mentioned Zach because Zach did a video about I have I'd thrown down the gauntlet. He wasn't going to take the gauntlet and all the rest. I, I, there's a bunch of people who sent me mails um, and then I got a text message of like, hey, hey, he's calling you out or he's not going to take you calling him out. And I'm like, I, that's not what any of this is. Good Lord, people. Um, if I was going to truly have a good feud and a good argument, it would absolutely hands down be about Arby's. It would not be about, you know, Dogman versus regular comics. And besides, if you're going to call somebody out, then you got to do it with something to promote. So, you know, wait until I get this comic all done that I've been working on for the last 50 years, and uh, then I'll do this feud. And it's like, and if you support my side, then run, do not walk to the bank right now, take out all the cash you can, put that cash into your hand, and then take your cash and give it to me, because you can experience for yourself an amazing comic book of epic proportions, only with me and supporting my argument. Come now, come, let's... That's what I would do. I would do something along the lines like that. You gotta be a good hype man. Um, but it gets back to something else that kind of was on my mind from the other argument I've had lately, which is, what can you learn from other people? Now, the, re the, the reality is, I don't want to see Marvel Comics and Spider-Man the X-Men and everything else uh, become Dogman. That, that's not what I want. I would like to see uh, some of these Marvel... Com I would like to see Marvel Comics produce... I don't know, not many, like two to three comics that are aimed at kids, that are clearly aimed at 12 and under. And I would like him to be actually written for that age group, not written by, you know, weirdo adults who are writing something that may or may not be vaguely for kids, but is probably inappropriate and is trying to ham fist in, you know, all the, the inappropriate uh, bullshit they can. Uh, because that's that's uh, that's the only thing they know about how to write for kids by putting in you know creepy garbage to uh, to try. This was unfortunately the lesson I think a lot of people learned from Pixar. Pixar became popular for doing kids movies, but they would they would put things in for adults, and people were like, "Oh, did you see that reference to you know getting a rim job in that Toy Story movie? That was for me. I like rim jobs. I I I found that funny. Kids don't understand it, but I was like, eh. eh. That's did I know what they mean by rim job? That's that's for me. That's a that's a me humor. But they didn't actually do much of that. There would be a couple nods to adults, and and generally the crappier movies that what Pixar did that nodded to adults was to actually have complex storytelling with layers to it that you know were was entertaining for adults and that caused adults to like well that's something to think about. I my kids are getting one message, but I'm getting another. You take something like Up, Up as a movie. Which is this, you know, for a kid, it's like grumpy old man has to go on adventure with kid, finds bird, talking dogs, you know, crazy times. And it's like, how did the man get grumpy? Well, he grew up and his wife died. Oh, you know. But for the for the grown ups who are watching that, you're like, oh look, God, his wife died. They want to have kids, but she she was infertile and they couldn't do it. And they it's like crushing their dreams. They tried to, you know, do, but but when they finally had a chance to take a vacation, they couldn't. Oh my God. That's the kind of nuanced storytelling. It's not about like inserting you know, like, ah, this hero's name is Blumpkin. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, the kids won't know what that means. They'll just think it's a funny word. But for those adults, uh, how about that? So that, anyway. Uh, but what I think comic books can learn from some of this, this these, these other creators, and this goes back to the argument I was having with Eric Larson, whether it's manga, whether it's YA, where, whether it's whatever it is, you look at things that are selling, you look at things that are doing well, and you think to yourself, hmm, can I incorporate certain aspects of this to make a stronger product for myself? Is there something to learn from the marketing, from the distribution, from how the, you know, the structure is done in the story? Like what, what here might I be able to use to make myself stronger? That is a mature grown up way of thinking about business. Uh, the, the dumb childhood way is to go, no, 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 it's not the same. Long as it's black and white, the people have big eyes. Even though the creators, well, I'm not going to say anything because it's racist, but but they have big eyes and they're speed lines, and I don't want I don't want to do that. So that's not the same. That's a childish, dumbass way of looking at competition. The right way is to say, hey, every single time, and, and any innovator, any creator, will tell you this: the way to be successful, the way to be powerful, is when you're walking around, whether you're going to a restaurant, whether you're going to the doctor, whether you're going to work, whether you're just driving around the freeway, your mind is always working. You look at interviews from Steve Jobs and other people who really kind of excelled in their space. They would be in, they would be shopping for furniture, and they'd get an idea about the GUI that needed to happen for their operating system. They were always thinking. They were taking inspiration from everything, and in particular, they were 
obsessively curious about things that work well. It's like, huh, I'm, I'm going to get fast food. I happen to notice that, uh, you know, the Burger King over here can't get people through the drive through but the Jack in the Box seems to be walking people through pretty quickly. And uh, why is that? What, what kind of efficiency is going on of one and the other? Can I learn something that makes me more powerful over here? That's, that's, the, that's the thing to learn. That's the lesson. And right now in comics, there is a lack of that kind of natural curiosity that goes, how can I try and figure out, you know, how to, how to make my product more powerful? How can I figure out how to, how to, you know, innovate? How, you know, how can I, you know, you don't have to, everybody doesn't have to always invent the wheel in a new way. You, you learn from others. So in terms of comic books, what's a comic book? Well, for me, it's, you know, it's, it's what you probably think of as a comic book. It's a floppy. 22 page thing you hold in your hand, color. Uh, that's what a comic book is. You know, manga. Yeah, manga's a comic book. Sure. Um, all uh, you know, so, sometimes not in color, but anyway, something that kind of reads like a story. That's that to me is a comic book. But that doesn't mean that uh, you know, so, you know, old Dad Pilkey. I guarantee you, there's a lot of comic readers, both traditional crowdfunding, all that would love his money and his success. Who wouldn't? Rain and Telegmeyer. They would love that. They would love it. And they should have, and, and how, how are you going to get that? You learn. You shut up, you put your ego in check, and you learn. And so that's why, that's probably why the Eric Larson thing, you know, irritated me so much. It was a, well, nothing we can find out here. I don't know, nothing, nothing to learn. Oh, well, guess I'll just have to keep going back and sell my two, 3,000 copies of Savage Dragon every month. Nothing I could possibly learn from this art. That's the challenge. No, no, no. Not picking up the gauntlet that was thrown. For Christ's sake, people, get a sense of humor. But but for people inside of comics, there's always something for you to, for you to learn. Always. You know, innovation is always in motion. There's a little tagline that Vertigo used. Ideas in motion are always in motion. And I, I love that quote. I love that tagline. Yes, it's a cheesy line. But it's a good line. It means invention is always happening. It's always coming. It's always It's always in motion. And if you can think like that, if you can, you know, kind of manage your business and manage your thoughts that way, you become powerful. And that's, that's what to learn. Anyway, what's a comic book? Well, kind of whatever the fuck you want it to be. But, you know, there's also, there's been lots of comics sold. So maybe, maybe not whatever you want it to be. <laughs> anyway, you can learn from anything. That's my point. Except, uh, you know, except Arby's. You can't learn. You can, well, you can learn not to poison people from Arby's. That's, that's pretty much all you got. Thanks for listening.